Fluff setting a baguette is one of the more difficult setting jobs a bench jeweler will encounter. It takes advanced skills and precise cutting of the seat to set the stone. In this project, we'll be setting a straight baguette in a low-domed wedding band. To begin, we need to file a flat spot on the band to give us an even surface to work from. Next, we need a straight line across the ring precisely at a 90 degree angle from the sides of the ring. Using a millimeter gauge will assist us in getting the line drawn precisely at 90 degrees. Place a drop of super glue on the surface and then center the baguette table down on the ring. Make sure that it is straight and lines up with the line we scribed and hold it with tweezers for a few seconds until it dries. Examine to make sure it is straight. Next, we need to scribe around the diamond a precise line the exact size of the stone. Using a scribe will cause our line to be a little big because the taper of the scribe will not mark the line precisely to the size of the diamond. So instead of a scribe, we use an X-Acto knife. Hold the blade at a 90 degree angle to the ring and we can scribe a line precisely the size of the diamond. Go around the diamond scribing a line on all four sides of the stone into the metal. Examine to make sure the line is precisely the same size as the stone and then using a pair of tweezers you can easily pop the stone off the mounting. We now have a line scribed the size of the stone. We next need a line that is a little bit smaller about a half millimeter smaller all the way around. So we set our dividers to one half millimeter and then just freehand scribe a line inside the line that we had drawn on the metal. This inside line is the area that we will cut out and the remaining metal will form our seat. Use a round bottom graver to create a divot in the metal to start the drill bit. And using your flex shaft or micromotor, drill a hole through on the inside of the rectangle so we can feed a saw blade through to remove the center portion. Then feed your saw blade through the hole and cut out a rectangle the size of that inner line. Be sure to hold your saw blade on an angle so that you do not cut into the back side of the shank. Cut up to the line and then slide the saw blade up and down along the cut using the saw blade as a file to trim out the cut to the size of the line. Turn the ring around and feed the saw blade through the other direction to cut the other side of the rectangle. Then using a flat graver cut the hole on the inside of the band. Cut down on a slight angle to smooth off the opening and to create an azure. Next, we need to begin to cut our seat. The outside rectangular line is the exact measurement of our stone. Using a straight-sided setting burr, the width of the stone, we can create this oval seat, the exact width of the stone, and cut it to the length of the stone. Cut straight down into the metal to almost the depth that we need for the seat and then move the high speed steel burr back and forth to create an oval opening. Be careful as you cut not to move the burr sideways creating a wider seat than the stone. Cut into the ends of the opening up to the line that we have scribed for the size of the stone. Then cut straight down into the mounting to create the seat the size that we need. Once we have the seat cut approximately to size, lay the stone on top to judge the fit. We want to make sure the width and length are correct. The length is not quite long enough, 
so we need to make the seat a little longer. Holding the burr on an angle, we can cut the surface to the length we need, and then with the burr straight up and down, we can cut to the girdle line. Cutting in this manner makes it easier to control the length of the cut and be more precise with our cutting. Then move the burr back and forth in the seat, creating a nice even seat on the sides. Again, we test fit our stone and our length is now correct, and we double check the width of the seat. Now that we have this part of the seat cut, we need to create the corners of the seat and remove the excess metal in each of the four corners. To begin with, we use a 90 degree heart burr and just cut in on the surface of the metal to the corners of the lines we have drawn. Then using a small ball burr, start cleaning up the corners, removing the metal at the girdle line creating a seat in the corners. Place the ball burr on the girdle line we created with the setting burr and continue that line into the corner. Then take a flat graver and trim out the metal, smoothing out the seat. Create a nice, even, flat surface with the flat graver. You could cut out the whole corner solely with the graver. I like cutting first with the burr and removing the bulk of metal, and then use the flat graver to create the straight line seat that is needed for the baguette. Then test fit the stone. Doesn't quite fit here, so we need to trim out a little bit more metal. You need to be real careful with your graver here that you do not slip or remove too much metal. We just want to skim the surface and remove just a little bit of metal at a time. Placing the baguette in upside down will allow us to see if the seat is cut correctly without the pavilion of the stone interfering with the fitting. Once we have the seat cut so that the girdle will fit the seat, we need to trim away the metal below the girdle line to make room for the pavilion of the stone. This process is just a lot of trial and fit. Cut a little bit and try the stone to see if it fits. Once the stone fits securely in the seat, we need to cut a pocket in the corner so that there will be no metal touching the corner of the stone. To do this, we use a round burr and go into the four corners and cut into the metal creating a small divot so that the fragile points of the corners of the stone will not be touching any metal when it's set. This will alleviate a lot of the breakage and stone damage when setting the stone. With the stone in the seat, rub your fingernail back and forth over the stone to see if there is any rocking. The stone should set securely in the seat without any movement. The next step is to push the metal above the stone down over the stone using a burnisher. For a baguette stone, we need to burnish the metal over the four corners first before we do the sides of the stone. If we burnish the metal over the sides of the stone, when we get to the corners, we may not have enough metal to adequately cover the corners. So by pushing metal from the sides into the four corners, we can tighten the stone and be assured that we have enough metal to cover the corners. 
The burnisher I'm using here is made from the shank of an old burr that we ground down and polished and mounted in a graver handle. When you do this, be sure not to overheat the burr shank because you do not want to remove the temper from the metal. Once the stone is tight and held by the four corners, we then use the burnisher to move the metal down over the sides and the ends of the stone. Once we have metal burnished down over the stone, we need to clean up the corners of the area that we burnished, as well as the sides. Because we used a round burnisher, the metal in the corners is rounded, and there can be a waviness to the sides of the metal that we burnished down. So to even this out, I use a flat bottom graver and use it as a burnisher. I begin by shoving the cutting edge of the graver into the corner to create a nice sharp corner and then I pull back on the graver using the face of the graver to burnish the sides. Working out from each of the corners in this manner will create a nice sharp corner and nice smooth burnished edge that is all one plane and is not wavy. You can also tip the graver so that the cutting edge rides on the stone and slide the graver back and forth. Put the finish back on the ring to remove any marks from where you might have slipped with the burnisher and then, as a last step, go over the burnished edge with a highly polished graver to get a nice, smooth, reflective surface. And the stone is set, and your ring is ready to be delivered to your customer.